Out of all the video game subscriptions, Ubisoft's Uplay Plus offers the smallest library of games at just 121, which you get for £13 a month. So, comparatively, you can put it down here. That's Uplay Plus. More like you pay plus. <laughs> 121 games might be far less than Xbox Game Pass Ultimate or PlayStation Now, but it's still a whole lot of games to cover in X minutes. And yes, you heard that right, I said X minutes because I currently don't know how long this video is going to take. We've just got a blank page in front of us and I have no idea how this is going to work. <laughs> Wait, can you hear this? What's happening right now? Oh my god, what the f- So as you can see, I'm not totally sure how to start this video. So, let's just start it. Now. Around 50% of the Uplay Plus library is made up of the core franchises. We're talking your Far Cries, your Watch Dogs, your Tom Clancy's, your Assassin's Creed's. My god, there's a lot of Assassin's Creed titles. There's even Assassin's Creed Discovery Tour. I'm guessing these franchises are the main reason you would subscribe to Uplay Plus, and not games like Pets Horses 2. Oh sorry, that's Pet Pets Horses 2. <laughs> well you might not want to play it, but I do. It's almost night time. Is this going to take much longer? It's those darn roads! I mean, look at the state of this road. It's unacceptable. What do they spend our tax money on? These cars are fragile. You've got to take care of them. You should find a place to stay. There's a village up there. We're not going to get out of here before tomorrow, you know. Okay. I guess I don't have a choice. Um, I know I'm just a poor little woman, but maybe you should check the radiator to see if that's the problem. My radiator is just fine, thanks. You think I've never done this before? All right, see you tomorrow, miss. Damn, that took up like 30 seconds. We gotta stop messing around. Okay, Assassin's Creed was a revelation for moving through an open world. <laughs> It said, stop walking on the ground like an idiot. Let's climb buildings and jump across rooftops. It's one of the first games I remember, at least, that introduced climbing towers to unlock new parts of the map, which is now part of, like, every open world game ever. Uh, it might not be the first game to do that, I don't know, but it was definitely the first that let you swan dive off the top of a tower, like an absolute badass. I, uh, oh, oh my leg. Oh, oh okay, my I mean, leg. what did you expect was going to happen there? It, it's a bale of hay, it's like one meter deep. Oh, okay, I guess, no, this this is fine, actually, yeah. So sure, practically every Assassin's Creed game suffers from missions that border on mindless repetition. And the characters and the plot points that were really quite intriguing to begin with, on how religion began from misinterpreting ancient codes, and how historical figures secretly fought for possession of artifacts with mind control powers. These have devolved into your standard hero stories, while the real world alternate timeline thing gets more and more complex despite absolutely no one caring doesn't say with who doesn't say with whom rebecca oh god just let me scale big ben come on the series itself is a pretty mixed bag but you won't find a collection of games that's better at glorifying key historical periods ignoring the disease and the infant mortality rates and the poverty so you can just sneak around as this cool cloaked silent killer until Ubisoft said, actually, wait, no, f*** that. You're a pirate now. Uh, no, you're an Egyptian warrior. No, no, you're a Greek warrior. Okay, how many seconds was that? With two minutes? Jesus, I'm gonna have to change the title. Okay, seriously, what I wanted to point out was some of the lesser known titles on the Uplay Plus service that you might not have heard about. So let's just reel through all the ones that you've definitely heard of. Far Cry lets you roam around pretty islands, doing pretty much whatever you want as long as it involves shooting stuff. I would suggest Far Cry 3 out of all of them. Although it took heavy inspiration from Metal Gear Solid, the Splinter Cell series still pioneered the stealth action genre, where you try and shoot as few people as possible. If you ask me to pick one, I'd play Chaos Theory. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six is back to shooting people, but this time it's tactical. 
play Rainbow Six Siege because it's the best one, and also because I don't think you'll be able to matchmake in any of the other ones. In Tom Clancy's The Division, we're in post-apocalyptic versions of New York and Washington DC in the aftermath of a global pandemic that- ooh. Ooh, this hasn't aged well. While the game's still primarily about shooting stuff, but yikes. Maybe don't play this one right now, unless you want to see what state the world will be in by 2021. And then there's Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, which is more tactical shooting, but in an open world. The latest game, Breakpoint, just released and is... it's okay? At first I thought it was just really slow to start things up, but uh, this is just the extent of the game. You walk over to a checkpoint, you struggle to hide behind cover because it's this dynamic system which just means it basically does whatever it wants. You get spotted by a group of enemies and you kill them and then you keep walking to the objective. To be fair, there are a lot of customization options and you can tweak the settings to make it a very realistic experience. Um, and I think it's better as a co-op game and the multiplayer was slightly better, I guess? But I just, uh, I just was pretty indifferent about the whole thing. Trials is daredevil bike stunts to the extreme, and the series has only gotten more ridiculous over time. The first one still offers the best challenge though, requiring the most precise acceleration and handling to traverse levels. I want to take more time to say how good Rayman Legends is, but alas, you've surely heard of Rayman. Even if you don't have Uplay Plus, Ubisoft are giving away Rayman Legends for free right now. So create a regular Uplay account and download it. Prince of Persia is now a forgotten series, but there are mechanics and ideas in here that formed the basis of so many games, not just from Ubisoft. Combat has counters and evades and finishing moves, while platforming sections have you running along the walls before jumping to ledges. Play the Sands of Time to see what I mean. Brothers in Arms replaced the cinematic run and gun format of war games that were just absolutely everywhere in the early 2000s with tactical squad based combat. I'm not sure how appealing this is to people who didn't play these games back when they were released. It's hard to have strong feelings for these graphics unless they're rooted in nostalgia. But play Hell's Highway as I think this one is the best. Watch Dogs 1 and 2 might get you excited for the upcoming Watch Dogs Legion, which does look pretty good. But I find these games just... Eh. Once the novelty of hacking your environment wears off, which takes longer in the sequel, but it's still inevitable, you're left with an open world that just feels like a watered down version of GTA 5. I'd still recommend playing Watch Dogs 2 because its story is a good commentary on some of the real world issues we face today. Um, certainly more so than GTA does. You are a hipster. But yeah, I just, I struggle to get excited about this. You may not have heard of the South Park games if you're not a fan of the show and South Park is certainly polarizing enough that people fall into that second category. Both South Park games impress though with how well they recreate the show's version of Colorado, which you'll either see as a positive or negative. Okay, glad we've got that out of the way. There are plenty more games on Uplay Plus, and here are the ones that I think are pretty good. Pets Horses totally revolutionized the horse care simulator genre, bringing the farmyard to life in a way never seen before. And then Pets Horses 2 just went and did it all over again. And they added dynamic horse penises. Do you ever get that itch to play Monopoly, but you know, you can't bring yourself to go up to the attic to dig out the board game only to find that the dog piece is missing? Or maybe you wanna play, but you're spending your sixth consecutive Saturday night alone in your flat and you just long for that slightest whisper of human interaction. Well, you can play Monopoly Plus with strangers on the internet. You might think Steep as little more than a current gen SSX, but it offers a lot more than tricks. In fact, the tricks largely perform themselves, which I appreciated, as I found exploring the mountains to be the most fun part. And this rocket wingsuit, obviously. Ah! You ever get that itch to play Uno, but you're still indoors on your own, and you're starting to have really strange dreams about you and your cat? Well, you can play Uno with strangers on the internet. Beyond Good and Evil is another 3D action adventure that feels like the beginning of something that would later evolve into something much greater. There are elements of Tomb Raider style puzzle solving, um, there's kind of stealth sections and you can freely explore the world in upgradable vehicles. The only caveat is that it reminds me of this incredible gameplay demo at E3 in 2017 and there's been like no information since then, like at all. 
Maybe because it's so ambitious to have this level of detail be a tiny speck of the greater world. So maybe we'll hear something more about it for the next generation of consoles, I don't know. Transference is a very dark psychological horror developed by Ubisoft Montreal and SpectreVision, which is a video game company owned by Frodo. So I just learned that was a thing. But seriously, this game is very dark, based around an abusive drug addict father who transferred his and his family's consciousnesses into a simulation. It's your job to go into that simulation and try and rescue them. And I'll admit the full effect was lost on me as this game is meant for virtual reality. But I was disturbed enough playing on PC and I can't imagine what that experience would be like in VR because shit gets f Child of Light is a wispy, hand-painted fairy tale with pretty watercolour backdrops and completely written in rhymes, for better and for worse. The cutscenes contain great poetry, but in the standard dialogue it often seems forced, and I wasn't taken by the turn-based combat which felt pretty easy playing on the casual difficulty. There is the expert difficulty, which makes combat the focus, but I would have just preferred a middle ground. I was never too sure how in control I was in Ode, which is a particularly bizarre example of one of those interactive ambient rhythm games. I started to get the gist of things through its four levels, pushing and pulling these balls into objects to make sounds. But the cacophony of noise in the game didn't ever seem to match what I was doing. It still makes for a great experience with, of course, a great soundtrack, but it wasn't as interactive as I hoped it would be. I spoke about For Honor's surprisingly unique and complex combat in my PlayStation Now game list, as this is also on PS Now. The game didn't actually work on PlayStation Now, however, so I guess now I've been gifted a second chance. I'd have been shocked if it didn't work on Ubisoft's own service. No, I'm just kidding. It did work. But wait, what? Oh right, it's, it's April Fools. Okay. This is one of my favourite games on Uplay Plus, but you can also get this game for under £10 now. Although Uplay Plus does include the DLC, so I got to play as this badass Shaolin monk. It's just a shame he's two feet tall. Like, man, this is so stupid. Like, yeah, haha, I get it. You accidentally shrunk all the heroes. Good one. But can you at least make this an option? Why, why do I have to play it like this? Flashback is a remake of the original 1992 game on the Genesis. It lets you play the original game in the title screen, presumably to emphasise how far video games have come. But some games should be left in the past. Not because they're bad, but because that's the way they're meant to be. And Flashback is one of those games. So I'd just stay in the title screen. I Am Alive is yet another survival game set in a post-apocalyptic world. That's not to say it's bad, but when the genre has been done to death, I can't recommend returning to this relatively unknown Xbox 360 title when all of these games exist. Ooh, he put Death Stranding on there, what the hell? That game's not post-apocalyptic, it's postal delivery service, the game. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, we're running out of time, but don't worry, because anything I haven't mentioned is really not worth your time, and trust me on that. I've done the legwork to find that out for you. It was brutal, so don't let my sacrifice be in vain. But you, you don't need to play Speedbusters, you don't need to play the Settlers History Edition, and you definitely don't need to play Silent Hunter 2 World War 2 U-Boat Combat Simulator. Just don't do it to yourself, okay? That's not to say that if you are a big fan of the Assassin's Creed franchise, or Far Cry or the Tom Clancy games, as obviously a lot of people are, then £13 a month may be good value for you. And there are other games on there that are decent, as I've mentioned, and the service gives you priority access to upcoming games like Watch Dogs Legion and whatever Assassin's Creed game is sure to come out very soon. I'm just not sure that Ubisoft doubling down on its core franchises is the best move when services like PlayStation Now and Xbox Game Pass, you know, pride themselves on their variety. But hey, if you're on Uplay Plus, let me know what you think. Drop a comment down below on if you think the service is worth a monthly cost, how it compares to the other subscriptions, and any games you would like to see on there in the future. Thanks. Not bad. Finished with a bit of time to spare. Um, I'm going to go make a cup of tea while the last few seconds tick away, and you can watch this.
Chess. Ever since I was little, I've always dreamt of visiting this country. And my father, who was from France, had gotten me an internship in Paris with one of the city's most renowned veterans. I'm looking for a place to sleep. Is there a hotel in the village? Uh, nope. No hotel. Nope, no hotels here. But we got a real nice bus. A real nice bus. It comes here every day. It'll be here in 20 minutes. A pretty yellow bus. My name's Hugo. Just my luck. I had to stumble on the village idiot. Do you, um, speak French? No, sorry, I don't speak French. And I also don't speak to strangers. I've got a train to catch tomorrow. Right now, I'm just waiting for the bus so I can get to the town down there and have a nice night in the hotel. Sorry, can't help you. Sorry. I'm the one who's sorry. Why is that? Well, your bus. It'll never show. I don't know how old your guidebook is, but a bus hasn't come through here in more than 10 years. Oh, no! Why did I trust that idiot? You're not afraid to go fast, are you? Let's go! So I didn't get a cup of tea, I'll be honest with you. Um, I just wanted to show you some more of that game, because it's something. Um, but thanks for waiting, and thanks for watching. I'll be reviewing more Uplay Plus games in more detail um, to try and find out which are the best and which are the worst. We may have ticked the worst box already, but if there's any games you want me to review, please let me know in the comments and I will definitely see to them. Um, while I've got you and asking you to do stuff, if you can like this video, if you liked it, that would mean a lot. It would mean even more. I said bean. <laughs> it would mean even more to me if you subscribe to the channel. Um, that would be great. And that's all I'm going to ask. That's it. You can go now. Go watch my other stuff. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to say that. I don't like telling you what to do. You, you go do your own thing. I'll be here. I'm going to start making the next video. And maybe I'll see you around. <laughs> all right, see ya.